one of the things you have to do in, in a person who has traumatic memories and so forth, or is just anxious in general about some kind of situation, you have to get rid of the behavioral responses in the physiology because those will always reinvigorate, reestablish the memory if, if you've got the amygdala activity that is still there. So step one, I think, is you should target the amygdala, tame the amygdala. How do you do that? And by taming the amygdala, I mean like suppressing heart rate increases, suppressing freezing behavior. So we, we know that if we give people pictures of snakes or spiders or you know, other kinds of scary things, that will activate the amygdala in a human. And you can present those stimuli subliminally. So the person doesn't know the stimulus is there. It's like a split brain patient that says, I didn't see anything. So the person says, I didn't see anything, but their heart is beating a little faster because the stimulus was there. So maybe if we could use subliminal exposure therapy, in other words, present the spider to the spider phobic subliminally, because spider phobics don't like to see spiders, right? But you can do it that way that the conscious spider phobic mind doesn't know the spider is there. Mm -hmm. So tame the amygdala, reduce the arousal. And okay, now the person can look at the spider without, you know, feeling all, you know, the muscle tension and the jitteriness and all that. So now what you want to do is tame the hippocampus, start changing some memories that the person was too upset about to, to really be able to address them. And once you've done step one and step two, now you want to just tame the prefrontal cortex by engaging in just regular old talk therapy, you know, because now the person is ready to talk about it because you've got the, because the threat responses, you got, you got the, the physiological and behavioral threat responses and the beliefs stored in memory that have been adjusted. So now they can just talk about their life as a person mm -hmm. rather than being all, you know, freaked out about it. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm not a therapist. I'm just making this stuff up. But this no, is totally. It's, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. And you mentioned the hippocampus. And so, what's what does uh, taming the hippocampus look like? Just well, in would want to, you know, the hippocampus stores our conscious cognitive memories, episodic and semantic memories. And so, in any kind of anxiety, you're going to store episodic memories about you know your relationship to that situation. And every time you revisit your that past situation in your mind you're retrieving those episodic memories and every time you envision your future you're time traveling so you can time travel to the past through episodic memory but you can also time travel to the future and when you time travel to the future you're anticipating you know this happening to you again so it's kind of like rumination of not only the past but about the future so you need to like adjust those episodic memories and, and find ways to recode them so that the person can then have a conversation about their life without that being their life in a sense. Would introducing like mindfulness, like safe imagery, things like that, would that be qualify with this idea of um, shifting that? Yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of mindfulness, and I think that's incredibly useful. Uh, how it fits into this program would be, you know, I guess in, in order to do it in terms of episodic memory, you would have to have the person meditating on their episodic memories. Or, I mean, or creating, since a memory is a future, right? That That's one of the techniques true. that people are using are like basically using your imagination to imagine this false positive memory. Right. So, but, but I think memory you also, going forward, huh? but, but I think you also need, if you leave the past memories there to be reinvigorated, you know, they just, right, so right, somehow right. we have to address that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my, my thing is very simple minded and it's probably impractical uh, for anything. I mean, if it worked in spider phobics, that would be a good test case. But if you've got things that are much more complex in terms of you know, memories of all kinds of things, and yeah. it's not just a specific stimulus, but a, you know, like mm -hmm. a whole system of knowledge that, that's problematic, mm -hmm. then it's not going to work.